Part rosary. Six. Put Let's the money go. in the rosary together. Like and subscribe. He couldn't do it. He literally, his 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 his, his arm. He tried to put the money in. It, it, it was like it, it got it got like he could not do it. His beliefs that we talked about were so strong that it literally wouldn't consciously let him do it. But he worked on it. See, he, he wanted to get to the point where he, he recognized the validity of the things that we were talking about, and so he did want to do it, and so he kept on trying. It took him about a week. And once he got the money in with the rosary, he had like all these conflicting beliefs he had about the nature of money and the guilt that he, that he felt over it. It just, they just sort of all melted away, and he fired all these people. <laughs> He didn't even try to make them traitors because he realized that they, you know, these were not guys that, you know, that really wanted to be traitors. He realized what he was doing. He realized he was just, he was just giving his money away. What gives a professional trader the ability to execute their trades without error? They are confident, meaning they are no longer encumbered by the same fears that plague the typical trader. Trading without fears is learned mental skills. I've already given you examples of mental skills. Remember what, what did we say about, about the ability not to choke? Okay, Under, that would be an example of a mental skill. Learning to trade without fear, hesitation, or internal conflicts is a function of believing that you don't have to know what's going to happen next on a trade-by-trade -trade basis to win or make consistent money. This is, the, this is the heart of it right here, everyone. Okay? This is the heart of it. And again, we're still in the introduction, believe it or not. Okay? So I'm, I'm going to reinforce all this. But eventually, what you're going to do is get to the point where you believe that you do not have to know what is going to happen next on a trade-by-trade -trade basis. This trade, and this particular trade, and this particular trade, you don't have to enter these trades thinking that you know what's going to happen next to win, to make consistent money. And that when you stop believing that, you will start making consistent money. Because it's, the, it's your expectations about this trade winning that's, that's going to mess you up. Go ahead. What you're really saying is you have to have a belief in your plan or your methodology, and you're looking for a probabilistic yeah, result talking. saying, over a period of time, I will execute 60, 70, 80 percent of my trades. The one I'm going into now could be a good one, could be a bad one. That's right. I don't care. That's right. Exactly right. Perfect. Thank you. You do not have to know what's going to happen next on a trade-by-trade -trade basis. This is where we're going. You okay. You win or lose your next trade. You don't Thinking, know assuming, or believing you know what will happen next creates an unrealistic yeah. expectation in a, in a specific outcome. What's wrong with an unrealistic expectation? Well, think about, let's say, expectations in relationship to the, the characteristics of humanity. You can, this cuts across all, everybody, and cuts across all cultural, all cultural lines or barriers. Everyone, it, well, first of all, we can get, get to that point. What is an expectation? An expectation is a mental representation. In other words, a belief, an assumption, or an opinion, or whatever. Thinking, assuming, or believing. A mental representation of what the next moment meaning next moment, next five seconds, or the next in 10 seconds, or the next hour, or whatever, is either going to, in the environment, in other words, we have a mental representation, and we have an external environment that expresses itself, okay? So my mental representation, meaning my expectation, if the, if the environment shows up in a way that is consistent with what I believe, then what, it, what, will, what will my state of mind be? This is a universal characteristic of humanity. This isn't any different with anybody, anywhere. How will I feel? What will be my state of mind? What will be my experience? I'll be in a state of satisfaction, a state of well-being. I could be joyous. I could even end up in a state of euphoria. The degree to which the environment does not express itself in a way that's consistent, what I, the way, consistent with the way I think it's either going to look like, sound like, taste like, smell like, or feel like, okay? I will be in a state of dissatisfaction. It's going through the five senses here. I'm going to taste this trick. A state of betrayal. Disgust. Anger. Fear. Terror. 
Your ability to create consistent results as a trader is all about what you expect. When you change your expectations to be consistent with the way the environment, the market environment exists, the fear will go away. When you change your expectations in a way that's consistent with the way the actual market environment exists, your fear will go away. And you'll be able to do exactly what you need to do when you need to do it without conflict, without hesitation, and be able to close that profit gap between what your methodology will give you and what you end up with in your bottom line. Unrealistic expectations cause us to define and interpret and therefore perceive market information as threatening. Ultimately, we can, look at, we can break the market Here, down to its lowest definable component parts. We break the market down to its lowest definable component parts. What we end up with is up and down ticks. Watch this. Okay? An uptick, an uptick is one incremental price change where the price moved from one to two, from two to three, four, five, six, whatever, and then down ticks. Okay? When we're operating out of unrealistic expectations, we're going to tap into four primary trading fears that will cause all the errors that we make as traders. Those fears are the fear of being wrong, losing money, missing out, and leaving money on the table. And those fears will actually cause us to perceive these up and down ticks as threatening. And what we're going to learn about the nature of fear a little later is that fear will cause us to focus on the object of our fear so that we end up creating the very experience we're trying to avoid. Therefore, if I'm trying, if I'm afraid of being wrong, I will actually perceive this information in a way that causes me to be wrong. If I'm afraid of losing, I will perceive these up and down ticks in a way that will actually cause me to lose. If I'm afraid of missing out, I'll actually create the experience of missing out. And if I'm afraid of leaving money on the table, that's exactly what I'll end up doing. Now, when you think about the nature of these up and down ticks and the photons that appear on your computer screens, is, is, <laughs> there, is there an inherent characteristic in that information that's threatening in any way? No. In other words, is it, is it information? Is it, in other words, when we talk about just the numbers. nature of emotional pain, which is, which is the threat of pain, okay, the, the fear, not physical pain, where if we have a, a, if all of us have <coughs> a normal nervous COVID. system, and we come into contact with a physical object, object, you know, if I hit this with my arm, it's going to hurt. If you hit it with your arm, it's going to hurt. So, so we've got some universal commonality. But with emotional pain, it's not that way at all, although we think that it is. It's not. Because <clears throat> emotional pain requires an interpretation. And then interpretation comes from what we believe. You guys with me on this, on the interpretation part? Because, see, the information itself, the up and down ticks, have no charge to them whatsoever. They're not positively or negatively good charged. Stuff on this one. It's good stuff They're this just part. up and down ticks. That, based on your ability to read those up and down ticks, tell you what the, what the potential is for the market to move in any particular direction. If you're perceiving them as threatening in some way, that's definitely going to cause you problems when it comes to creating consistent results. In fact, you're going to find it impossible. You all know exactly what he's talking about, too. You all have been afraid to take a trade because you're afraid of being wrong. You're afraid of losing. Okay, let's talk about some typical trading errors. The typical trading errors, the professional has Most evolved beyond. Doing. Don't define the risk in advance of putting on a trade. Why in the world, now of all the trading books that you've ever read, Don't define the risk. out of all the workshops you've probably been to, I'm sure that you have been exposed to this particular piece of advice countless times. What is he saying, what is he saying to do that or to not do that? Not to, and yet, not to it, is, it is the primary trading error that people commit 
all the time. It's the they error. don't predefine the risk the in advance of putting don't. on a trade. That makes more if sense. you don't predefine the risk in advance, you're operating out of the mindset that you think you know it's going to happen next. And what I'm going to establish from you when you establish for you when we get into the next section is that that is absolutely not the case. It doesn't mean we don't think that, but the reality is it isn't the case. I preach that all the time. You don't know what's going to happen. There is no there is no should have. See because when we have when we predefine our risk, let's put it this way. Could, if if I'm a typical trader operating out of the four fundamental fears, the fear of being wrong, the fear of missing out, losing money, etc. We got a real problem here because our minds are naturally wired to associate. In other words, they automatic our minds will automatically make connections, meaning this: that if I if I'm if I get into a trade, and I end up being wrong, I expect it to win, and I'm wrong. I have to admit that I'm wrong. It isn't just admitting that I'm wrong on this one trade. Our mind, because the way our minds are wired, it has the potential to tap us into the accumulated, the accumulated, the accumulated negative energy of every time I've been wrong in my life. Okay. So if this circle when represents when wrong, a huge trade, ball of negative like energy no inside of our mental environment about what it means to be wrong, being wrong on just one trade could tap us into that pain. And it's going to work differently for everybody. Everyone's mind works, works a little bit differently. But that's the potential. If you wonder why people seem to live and die on the outcome of the next trade, this is one of the reasons why. This is why it's so important. Because it has the, the potential to tap us into the accumulated negative pain of every time we've been wrong in our lives. Every time we've lost something in our lives. Every time we've missed out on an opportunity that we didn't take advantage of. Every time we've been on, in an opportunity and didn't get the maximum amount that was available. Those are the four fears. So the problem with predefining our risk is this. Is that if I'm afraid of being wrong, and I don't know how to think about trading appropriately in a probabilistic mindset, I'm not going to get into this trade unless I think I'm right. And the problem with predefining the risk is that it requires that I gather evidence as to why it might not work. Predefining your risk requires that you gather evidence as to why it might not work. Well, I wouldn't even be getting into it in the first place if that were the case. So I'm, I'm going to gather as much evidence as possible to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. Because if I start gathering evidence as to why it might not work, then I might talk myself out of taking the trade. And then if I end up talking myself out of taking the trade and it turns out to be a winner, I'll probably be in more emotional pain than what I would have been in had I taken the trade and it turned out to be a loser. Yes, feel that? Feel like when you, when you miss out on a winning trade, it feels worse than when you lose money? So I just make sure I that like I've that. got all my ducks in a row and I don't take the trade unless I do. And therefore, what I have done, now think about this, what I have essentially done is define the risk out of the trade. I've gone through a mental process in which I have literally defined the risk out of the trade. Just by not taking it, then there's no risk. Why do I have to put a stop in the market and predefine my risk if I know I'm going to win? A professional trader just doesn't think that way. They would not, I'm not saying that they never thought that way. I'm not saying that, that they didn't experience the exact same thought process that I just took you through. I'm saying they have evolved beyond it. They would never allow themselves to get into a trade without predefining the risk. In other words, what does the market have to look like, sound like, or feel like to tell me this trade isn't working? The next error, define the risk but don't take the loss and it turns out to be a bigger loss. That's probably, again, probably one of those things that never happened to anybody in this room, but just in case someone watches a, the DVD where this sort of thing has happened, I, I included it. <laughs> Second mistake. Same dynamics, basically. 
hesitate, get in too late. Why are you going to hesitate? Why are you going to hesitate to get in? If, you're, if the criteria that you use to define an, edge, define an edge is present in this moment, why would you hesitate? Fear of losing. Ooh, pick me, Mark. Because you don't think the trade's going to work. Yeah. You have doubt. In other words, you are either thinking, believing, or assuming that you know what's going to happen next. Think of the connection here. You couldn't hesitate unless you either assume, think, or believe that you know what's going to happen next. If you operate out of the perspective that you don't know what's going to happen next, that I don't need to know what's going to happen next to make money, then there's no point in hesitating. Jump the gun. Get in too soon where the signal never actually develops. Coming off of a winning trade. You're going to jump the gun when you come off a winning trade or a series of winning trades, right? And you're just so excited about what you see developing. Eh, the signal isn't quite there yet. Like all of this but is you know what? by having Let, let's get in before the objectively defined, back-tested rule set that I preach all the time on this channel really, really helps eliminate all these mistakes he's talking about. What else? No, And you never actually get a signal. Get in and out. Exactly. That's a no trading decisions. error. I don't make decisions, right? Now, see, the, the point, that doesn't mean that you couldn't win. See, what you're going to find is that when you trade on what I call a trade-by-trade -trade basis, see, we're going to make, the, we're gonna make the, the distinction between trading trade-by-trade -trade and tra trading over a series of trades. When you trade trade-by-trade, -trade, it means that each individual trade is like a life-or-death thing. In other words, I, I wouldn't be putting this trade on if I didn't think this trade was going to win. Not that, not the other, the, 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 um, the opposite of that, was, which is, I'm going to put on the next 20 trades because I think that 70 or 75% of them or 50% of them are going to win. There's a huge difference in perspective. One trade doesn't matter. Don't assume you know what's going to happen next. So if you're coming off a winning trade or a series of wins, you're likely to jump the gun. But the interesting part about all this is that each one of these errors that I'm giving you could all result in a winning trade. <laughs> you could do every single one of these things and still win. If you don't get in and out where your objectively defined rules tell you to, it's a bad trade whether you make money or you don't. If you get in and out where you're supposed to, it's a good trade even if you lose money. You could not predefine your risk and still find yourself in a winning trade. You can hesitate and find out it's exactly, exactly the right thing to do in that moment. You can jump the gun and find out it's exactly the right thing to do in that moment. You can not take your loss and the market comes back in your favor. All these errors that we're talking about, you can commit over and over again, and they could end up having, you could end up experiencing positive results. Except one thing, one thing is that when you indulge yourself in behaviors, in these kinds of behaviors, it could lead to usually, a, no, but not could, it virtually every time leads to a catastrophic loss. Catastrophic. It works. You put it on a trade without predefining your risk three or four times in a row and turns out to be a winner. And then the next one, you don't do it that's the one that's going to be the catastrophic loss. See, so on a trade-by-trade -trade basis, you can do anything for any reason and commit any error or what would be considered an Excuse error me. in the perspective of trying to create consistency and still win and still have winning streaks and still have a lot of fun. But you're setting yourself up for catastrophic losses. Get out of a winning trade too soon and leave money on the table. There's, there isn't a trader alive who hasn't experienced that. Let a winning trade turn into that. a loser without having taken any profits. Take my, take my All these errors soon. are the result of thinking, assuming, or believing that we know what's going to happen next. Move a stop closer to an entry point, get stopped out, and the market trades back in your favor. In other words, what would that tell you? Get if you if you're here, you're if you buy at this price right here, rules. and you really put your stop here, this is all you're really saying is that this is this is how far I'm going to let the market trade against my position you to really tell me that me this trade really is either not working Other at all, or that soon. the that potential for it working is so diminished that it's that not worth me staying on. in any longer. 
and then the market starts to drift down to your stop. The mistakes, and then, let me talk. The mistakes, sorry, Mark. The mistakes that I make, like I just said, take take my winners too soon. Don't let them get all the way to profit. And then I protect my green days. So if I take a trade and I'm up 60 bucks, I will oftentimes stop trading for the day because I am just, I just want to be green. I, I'm like happier just being green on the day than I would be, you know, every trade has positive expected value. I should take all of them I possibly can, right? You know, I miss out on the three, four, five hundred dollar red days that sometimes the system has because I've stopped at sixty to a hundred dollars because I was happy with that day. Um, but then, you know, when the system does have two, three hundred dollar red days, that happens too. I haven't then built in the same profit gap. Like I haven't made the right amount of money according to the system to be able to eat losses like that. That was my problem when I was trading the system when it was working really well. I didn't crush it as much as it did. And then, so when it had a natural drawdown, it really, like, it took away all the profits I made when it was working. Even though it was just a normal drawdown for the system, I didn't capture enough of the upside. Uh, you know, that's and another you move your big stop problem up. I have that I'm working on. And you get, get stopped out. And then the market does this. What would that tell you about your attitude? What? Yeah, and you hadn't accepted the risk of that trade, did you? See, see, people can put stops in the market. It doesn't mean they've really accepted the risk. You can put a stop in the market, but it doesn't mean you've genuinely accepted the risk. This would tell me, someone came to me and said, Mark, this is what I did. This is what I know. I know that you didn't accept the risk of that trade or you wouldn't move the stop. What? Yeah, you can move the other way too, you know. Because you, well, that's because you don't want to admit you're wrong. Yeah. <clears throat> The professional trader is no longer susceptible to these typical trading errors because he's learned to think in probabilities. When you understand the relationship between how prices move Expected and the mathematical value. formulas and price patterns that make up a trading methodology, patterns that make up a trading methodology, quantifies that movement into tradable edges, then why you have to learn the skill of thinking in probabilities will become self-evident. In other words, when we get through the next section, the way There's you need to think, I want you guys to be at a point where it just becomes Expected completely self-evident. As to why you need to think in probabilities to make consistent money. That trades can lose. It just makes sense. It's just time, like, it oh, works. yeah, okay. This makes absolute sense. The three developmental modes of trading. Now, I, I gave you the broad skill sets that Let's, you... So we're about to jump into the three developmental modes of trading. We've been on this video for 22 minutes. This seems like a good place to stop. And then we'll jump into the three development mo modes of trading in part seven. Let's go over the part six notes. Uh, some really good stuff in this one. Traders that can execute without mistakes have confidence. You do not know what is going to happen. You do not have to know what is going to happen next on a trade by trade basis. I should actually say this is you, you don't know, not have to. You do not know what is going to happen next on one trade, trade by trade. You have an idea of what's going to happen over the next 20, 50, 100 trades right? Uh, your ability to create consistent results is all about what you expect. When you change your expectations to meet market conditions, your fear will go away. That means that, you know, don't take a trade in SPY and expect to make 10%, right? Take the trade in SPY, get what you get and get out, right? Uh, the four primary trading fears are being wrong, losing, missing out and leaving money on the table. Feeling of fear causes you to focus on the object of that fear, which leads to it happening. So if you're afraid of le leaving money on the table, causes you to focus on that, which ends up making it happen, right? Emotional pain requires an interpretation and interpretation comes from what we believe. So, you know, you, you are manifesting these fears within yourself, within your own belief, in your own mind. Um, experiencing loss can tap us into all the times we've been wrong before. This can be curbed by predefining the risk and understanding that the trade you're about to take can lose that much money or can lose you know, that many percentages or up to whatever mark uh, in the market. Understanding that on a trade by trade basis, you can lose. Uh, do not assume you know what is going to happen next. So some really good stuff in part six here. It feels like we're really actually starting to dive into some stuff here a little bit past the introduction. So that was good. Hit like and subscribe. Hopefully you guys are excited for part seven. You all have a good night.